Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are live again Sunday night, 7 o'clock with Dr. Boz, myself, Jennifer Marie, my husband, John Garza. And let me tell you, if you want to learn anything about keto, intermittent fasting, problems, anything else, like this is a talk all. We just talk about all of it. So um, do me a favor. Share this video out with lots of people. Let us know you're here. Let us know where you're from. Um, let us know the chapter in which you are reading on Dr. Boz's book. Um, just, and oh, and also let us know if you have any questions because we always look over the questions. Not only do we try and um, work them into maybe future broadcasts, we might even be able to answer some now. So um, be sure to let us know what you got. So, hey guys. Yeah. Good to see you again. <clears throat> I see you're uh, you're on the travel. We so, are. Yes, yeah. travel is hard with on keto too. Let me tell you, it's hard. Yeah. You know, you kind of introduced me into some of the the snacks that uh, that you you liked, and I'll be honest, I hadn't done hardly any keto snacks. But when I regret not having a, a snack is whenever I travel. That my <laughs> my only solution when I was traveling was to fast, and that. If I got too stressed, I'm like, I completely went off the bandwagon. So uh, I hope you're prepared with the stress of what happens when you travel. And there, there's lots of places you can order good food that fits in the keto diet. But yeah, when you're irritated or stressed or just nothing feels normal, you're yeah. like, it's just another barrier that does get harder. Yeah. yeah well, it's true. Well, I had a um, chicken kebab on with what New York well I'm in New York so we had New York street truck food which my daughter loves so fun. And then for dinner we all had bunless burgers with guacamole, guacamole. and a side salad so the typical yeah yeah so let's go back so um, I want to hear about how you're let's start with you Jen how, how has your week been as far as uh, uh, let's just remind people what, what what we set up with I think a recap is always really helpful for people who haven't t tuned in when we look back and say, all right, there's been some uh, amazing health improvements that you had when you went on the ketogenic diet. And you really mastered how to cook for your family. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, you know, have a huge platform for using recipes in a way that you had never cooked like this before and just found tasty things that not only work for you, but for also for your family. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, got a good 50 pounds off. Uh, and then you really plateaued. Yes. Uh, and although the health benefits were great, you could feel your brain would focus, your, you know, you were able to concentrate, lots of really good things happening, but that scale wasn't moving. Yeah, I hit the 200 pound weight loss and it seems like um, everybody who hits that 200 pound weight loss, you can do it when you've eaten nothing really good in your diet and you start this diet, you will lose weight no matter what. But then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you lose and lose and you're eating right and you're doing great and then you just stop and then it's like okay what happened so that's where we are you had me um since we were stalled well since i was stalled you had me testing my glucose and my ketones and of and course that was new you, right you had never done that before no no, no. i don't like to prick myself with <laughs> blood either so yeah, you and most people, right? So you say no, and most people do not need to do that. If they hit this plateau, uh, there's a few little tricks that they can do. But um, when you you were at that pl plateau for over six months, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I was yeah. bouncing back and forth. Yeah, yeah. You you introduced me to a new word called the Wonderland. Yes, you know that. <laughs> yeah, which is less than uh, in the 100 land, which I thought that was a great. You should coin that. That's funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, again, there was this barrier where when you look at it from a metabolic side, from a doctor's side, we know that your body had reached a reset. It had recalibrated and was now stable. Yep. The human body actually really likes to be stable. So you had made all these adjustments and now your body had really stabilized. Yep. And so the first thing we did was, um, the reason I am such a proponent of this diet isn't just that it's a uh, a huge anti-inflammatory, amazing improvements in how brain function and brain repair and you know, less inflammation inside the body. But uh, as a physician who's had 20 years of listening to patients, I love that you can measure this. So that's where I said, go get your, go get your glucometer, you know, get some therapy sessions for poking your finger, figure it out. 
Yeah. It's not that bad, really. Once you get started, I do it now and I don't even stress about it. Too right. I, I tell folks, yeah. Yeah, I teach little, you know, kids how to do this for their own blood sugar. So I get once you get past it and, and my uh go ahead. I was also gonna say though, the blood meter that we use makes a big difference because um we bought a cheapy one from Walmart and um it sticks you enough to where you bleed like a like quite a bit. And there's no level for you to be able to do it, which is great for his hands because he's got those really callous hands. But for me, it's very painful. So I use the four of six. It's linked in the show notes here. Um, I use that one. It does blood and glucose, or it does ketones and glucose, which is nice that you can have the same reading in both, but it also has an adjustment to where I can put it on the lightest setting and he can put it on the setting that works for him. And it's it's painless. It really is right. painless. So the first few, the first week I was, we saw your numbers. I was actually really impressed at how low your glucoses were. I expected them to be higher because when that body resets, when they get into a plateau, almost always when I ask patients to check their sugars, it's higher than it was with you. So you had the benefit of saying, oh, she really does have good sugars. Yeah. And then the other major rule that we, we implemented was there needs to be and you can you can call this the F word or you can use a different word. Uh, the F word is fasting. And that's scary to lots of people like, oh, I'm not going to do that, not going to do that. And even we talked about that a little bit. That was a, a barrier for you to step over. Yeah. But that fast is strict. Yeah. And it needs to match your circadian rhythm. So let me un fold, unpack that, making sure everybody understands that. Circadian rhythm is something where your body sends a hormone at about four in the morning to wake you up an hour or so later. Even when you've done night shift, that there is still a surge that happens at that four in the morning, that circadian rhythm is really important for metabolism. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the benefits of uh, the, the non F word is called time restricted feeding, meaning you only, <laughs> they, they use an animal, so it probably has a nicer term for adult, for human somewhere, but it's time, time restricted feeding where they only have the food allowed in their cages uh, for certain hours. Uh, but to look at the health benefits of, you know, decreasing inflammation, increasing wound repair, there's a lot of cancer data that's associated with, with fasting. It has to, has to match the circadian rhythm. So when you, you, my question for you was, what time do you get up and have that first cup of coffee? And you're like, hey, doc, I, it's black now. It didn't used to be black. Does it still count? And I said, no, 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 it still counts. It will still, st your metabolism is going and I need to match the, the eating time with your metabolism. So if you say, I don't want you to give up that cup of coffee, I do the same thing. It's very much a part of my routine and my pattern, but now I need you to take the timer backwards. And so your cup of coffee went in like at six? Yeah, usually it's 5.30 to six, 6.30 maybe. Okay, so I said back it up 12 hours. And uh, we're going to st start with just 12 hours where there's no food or drink that's anything but water. So you get salt and water for those 12 hours that you're fasting. Yep. And, and, then, and then you did that, right? I've done 12 hours. Um, I think there was one. Well, we're traveling and I had to wake up at 2.30. So there was one. Day <laughs> so not fair. That was not happening. So one yeah. day, I think I only fasted 10 hours. But. Um, ever since all the four weeks that we've been working together, I have done 12 hours. And, and in those four weeks, what's your weight done? Um, I think I've gone down, was it 6 to 190? I want to say I've lost almost eight pounds, maybe. All, I, th I think I'm averaging, averaging one and a half to maybe two pounds a week. And that's except, very good. Except for this week. <laughs> And I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it. What happened? Okay, so, well, this week, let me just tell you my numbers. Um, I've been in the 40, well, anyway, you're from 30, 32% ratio, which is where I take my blood glucose levels after I fast in the morning, right when I wake up, I take the blood glucose levels and I divide it by the ketone, which gives me this ratio. Let me just make sure everybody understands that. So, my lowest number was at 32% and my highest number was at 65%. My numbers typically are 40 and 50%. Oh, so good. 
yeah, that's really good numbers. It's really good, except for this week, even though my numbers were great, um, I had two glasses of red wine and you know those Lily's chocolate bars? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I ate half, uh, the whole bar, I ate half of a bar. So, so, so let's, let's just let, make sure I understand this. So when you had the glasses of wine, was it in the 12 hours? Um, no, I still fasted. I still so fasted, yeah. Okay, so you had the glass of wine before the timer started at the six o'clock hour or whatever. No, no, no. I had them in the evening, but the next morning I extended my coffee. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All so, right. Yeah. So let me let's, let's do this. So you, you have a tough day. You say, okay, this glass of wine, we've all fallen for this. So it's a really good teachable moment. And I'm sure there's lots of people out there who've done exactly what you did. And I'm going to explain to you what your body did. Okay. So you put the glass of wine in, let's say what, eight o'clock, seven o'clock? It was, it was eight or nine. It was eight okay, or nine. So yeah, it's like, okay, forget this keto life for a minute. I just need a break. I want, I love my glass of red wine. It's, yep. you know, not too high. It's not a chocolate shake. It really is just a glass of wine. And, you know, we've gone through this before that you can, uh, you can watch that the, the alcohol is a fuel. So you've got ketones as a fuel, you've got glucose as a fuel and alcohol is a fuel. But when the alcohol is being um, entering into that Krebs cycle and that mit mitochondria, the ketones and the glucose stop. So it's yeah. kind of like the breaks. But okay, so then you metabolize the, the alcohol and then you go back into metabolizing whatever else fuel is around. So you can in many ways say that alcohol puts the brakes on ketosis. Mm -hmm. And so then you wake up the next morning and let's say if you had that uh, alcohol at eight o'clock, uh, you then wake up the next morning and you said, I waited until eight o'clock to do the coffee. Yeah. I think that morning was 10 o'clock cause I really wanted to make sure I hit my hours. But the first thing I did was took my exogenous ketones. I went ahead and did a mixture of exogenous ketones, exogenous ketones, just to get me back in to ketosis very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then I had my coffee. <laughs> Okay, so what time did you put in the exogenous ketones? It was 10. Okay, 10 so everything waited till 10 o'clock. Yep. So here's that key about a circadian rhythm, is that even though your body didn't get anything in it, you still turned on your metabolism at 5.30, 6 o'clock, like you have done every day. As much as you say, hey, I'm, on, I'm gonna count the hours that are my hours, uh, yeah. your, your circadian rhythm wins. And so the numbers will still look okay. And that's a great sign to just say, you're quick to recover. You're gonna be quick to recover. You know, I've had folks, and even I've got some postings out there where I had a encounter with some uh, <clears throat> gummy worms, uh, like they were vitamin C gummies. <laughs> and I think I was, it was like 200, it was awful. No. And I'm like, yeah, it was terrible. For the next day, I could still, it, I didn't recover that fast. My sugars mm -hmm. were high for like a whole day and a half. Like, oh, that's awful. Uh, but you should be thankful because it does say that, you know, what has the ketogenic diet done in your, in your, you know, backstory of the 18 months before we started this. Mm -hmm. And that is that your metabolism is really crisp. You're able to flip very easily into ketosis. Oh. And that's, that's nice. Uh, you just will not lose weight <laughs> when that happens. So but, yeah, let me tell you about that too, because okay. even though my numbers are good, even though everything's fine, this is exactly why I rarely cheat. It's because the scale went up two and a half pounds, two, Ooh. two and a half pounds. And um, I don't have a scale with me to check and I can tell that I'm feeling lighter. But um, when I left, I think two days later, I was still only one pound up from all the weight I lost. So it is really hard. And this is exactly why I don't really indulge that much. So here's the good part though, is that, that you know people talk all the time, can you have a cheat day? Can you have a cheat day? And what I tell people is we don't call it cheat days in medicine. We call it compliance. Like, all right, I tell you to take your blood pressure medicine every day. Guess what? When we study people, they don't take it every day. They take it most days and then sometimes they've forgotten. And even if they don't think they forgot, they got to the end of the month and said, either the pharmacist counted wrong or I counted wrong because I got an extra pill. You know, <laughs> those things happen. Yeah. And, you know, you'll see these wars on uh, on Twitter, you know, out there saying, oh, I say you have a cheat day on keto, you know, on a ketogenic diet. And I say you can't have a cheat day on a ketogenic diet. I say you carb cycle. I say you don't. And I'm like, 
oh, you guys are wasting your time. Uh, the metabolism that you've practiced for the la better part of two years now or whatever you're at, and yeah. now we've kind of stepped it up to say, all right, she is stuck at this weight and she really wants the weight loss. We need to make a rule in her life that she can handle, but that also makes metabolic sense for how do we keep her heading in the right direction. Yeah. So here's some things that are encouraging. If you want a glass of wine and you want it to not really affect your weight, have it for lunch. <laughs> now, I don't know how that fits in your social life. It <laughs> uh, doesn't quite fit in mine either, but uh, he, you know, the, uh, the old, you know, Mary Payson, Perry Mason, a uh, uh, lawyer having a glass of scotch at three o'clock in the afternoon, which I, I don't think happens today. But uh, if you had the glass of wine within your 12 hours yeah. and you didn't you know, bring that 12, didn't bring that morning, um, uh, start time later to, to match your 12 hours. Uh, cause you really don't get the benefit from that. Um, uh, I don't want to say that there's no benefit, but it's just such a minor amount of benefit when they extend that, um, fast up. And what I would contend is that the next morning you got up and alcohol would have stopped it. Your sugar is not going to be too much higher, but um, having fasted until 10 o'clock in the morning, do you remember that morning being really productive or was it kind of a sluggish morning? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was sluggish because if I don't have coffee, it's pretty sluggish. Right? So yeah. then you say, well, what the heck am I doing this for? Why did I do that? Oh, so that I could lose weight? Well, all right. If you're trying to lose weight, um, the, the glass of wine is going to happen. And the key is to say, well, what, what's the best way to recover from that? And you did the right thing, which is just put in some ketones, uh, check your numbers before you do those in, or that doesn't give me very good data. I can't, then I just see that, yep, you took the ketones. So um, the ketones in a can are a great way to say, just help your brain turn on and then keep the morning routine. Um, the, the other part that I would maybe encourage you to do is you say, all right, I needed a glass of wine. I just, it felt good. You know, my husband and I had a great conversation, you know, whatever. It's part of your social life. We don't want you to become, uh, I mean, we, when people restrict too much that it impacts their social life like that, yeah. uh, they, they quit. So I, I want to teach you what else could you have done that wouldn't have had such a higher consequence of um, the, the, the weight gain. And that is, you get up the next morning, you have that shot of ketones. I'll tell you, when I do my exogenous ketones, um, today is, Sundays is when I start my fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and I try to go for 48, 72 hours. Uh, your time-restricted uh, pattern that you're doing is actually a better pattern than what I'm doing. I'm doing it for other reasons, kind of some patient guidance stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but before, I, if I'm feeling kind of punk, I'll take heavy whipping cream yeah. and mix it with the ketones with a little ice in a blended thing. And it's only this much stuff. I mean, it's not a lot of volume, yeah. but I love it. It's a great way to say, okay, it's got a nice, sweeter kind of taste. It's got the ketones in it. I didn't used to do them at all, but whenever I'm feeling that punk feeling, like after a glass of wine the night before, that's a great way to just uh, help help get back on the straight and narrow. The other part that happens when you boosted those ketones is you'll suppress your appetite a little bit, and that mm -hmm. is uh, easier. So. The next day, if you say, all right, I had a glass of wine, what could you have done that would have benefited a little more weight loss? And that is, or not have the weight gain, let's put it that way. And that is, you would have taken your next day's fast from 12 hours to 14 hours. Oh, okay. Okay, so that two hours or whatever you took in them where you said, okay, just extend that fasting time by a couple of hours. Okay. So you usually stop eating at like 5.30? Yeah. Okay. So I would push you to have that meal somewhere around 2 or 3 and be done eating at 3.30. And that's a little bit longer. But if you're trying to say, I'm trying to be methodical enough to reach a weight loss goal in the spring. And one and a half pounds a week is amazing. That's perfect. We're going to be right on track of doing that. Um, but what I've found is when people have a hiccup, it is not to run away from like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Or, no, no, no. Those are parts of life. Yeah. Uh, and if, if you say, here's what I would do after that, I found that it's much easier for me and my patients to say, here's a little trick that you could do that would mitigate some of that weight loss, which is extend your fast the next day. I'm guessing on the two hours based on your numbers because you're pretty, uh, you got pretty tight metabolism. That's nice. So I, th I think based on that, 
um, that you should be okay. All right. I got a plan for the next time. Enjoy the wine. <laughs> Just not every night. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, about, what about John? Let's hear about you, John. So you, you started about a week or so later after your wife and we have, uh, uh, I think, you know, first of all, the courage to come online and say, here's what I'm doing. I, I love that. Thank you. Keep doing that. Um, I just think it's very helpful to see what happens when a wife goes ketogenic and husband kind of does it too. But then when we say, let's, let's take your metabolism to the next level and see if we can get you off some of these medications, uh, it's a different level. So uh, tell me about your week. Well, I didn't want her to drink alone. So <laughs> you're such a good husband. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had some scotch. So okay. I usually don't drink that, but um, and I've also, but my numbers, I didn't bring them with me. I left them in Austin, but I can tell you they weren't nowhere near as good as hers. Uh, my glucose was in the mid 90s on average, and my ketones were 1.2 to 1.7. I think that the 1.7 was the highest. Um, okay. But I, I, you know, I know we spoke about this earlier. I've been having a lot of restless nights sleeping because of knee pain. So right. I don't, you know, and then I, I've probably had a couple of drinks um, more a day than she had that one, you know, to, because it kind of helps me go to sleep or relax to go to sleep. Or help you know, with it's the very pain. Um, so if you had to um, look at the number of hours, so I, let's go back. Originally, you fasted that first 24 hours, had some really great numbers. Mm -hmm. Then the next week we had your fast, I think you went into 36, but you're like, I don't know what I did to my brain, but I couldn't sleep. Right. And I said, I, uh, the next time that happens that you're up at 2 o'clock in the morning, check your, your blood ketones. I want to know how high they got <laughs> because those extra ketones will keep you awake. Ooh. And they don't sleep. And they're like, oh, doc, I thought you said this was supposed to improve my sleep. I'm like, just give me a couple of nights. It'll get better. Right. Um, so I want to know, now that we kind of got, got past the newness of, yes, you can fast. And it is, especially in, and I don't, this is a gender thing, but it really is more common than not that when a man fasts, the ketones burst up. They really do a great, they have incredible ignition, ignition of their metabolism, like really decreases their sugars, increases their ketones. The weight kind of just like slips out of their body, like a, running out their hair follicles, they just lose weight. So uh, that that process of losing uh, or being able to fast those first couple of weeks is a common story. Having said that, what what did you use for a fasting cycle this past week? Um, I, unfortunately, I probably wasn't as good on my fasting cycle as I usually have been. I've kind of and especially here recently, since we've been in New York, she's we're here on business. I'm yep. on vacation mode. So, um, yeah, but I did do, um, I probably probably say four nights of 12 hour fasting. I didn't go beyond the 12 hours. And then, um, but the other nights probably, um, beyond having a four thirty dinner, I would probably, I broke my fast probably having a couple of drinks, uh, okay. in and around bedtime. So I think that's the key um, is, you know, when you said you wanted to fast, then you said, oh, I want to do it longer. I don't stop people because right. there's a mental barrier that says, yeah, fasting really does improve their metabolism. I mean, it is amazing how well that works. Um, and then, you know, suggesting what I think would fit usually shows up when the newness of fasting wears off. So as you can see, fasting is easy the first couple of times, well, not easy, but it's like this kind of excitement. But um, I start fasting every Sunday and I will tell you if it wasn't for patients pushing me, not pushing me, but like encouraging me or having that reason why I fast, I would not do this. It's not, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to have a schedule that you do once a week. Um, so instead of having those, um, uh, longer fasts, I wonder if this week we couldn't say, all right, I need all the, the alcohol and the food to be in. And I would, I would actually push you to even a 10 hour fast. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I've, Jennifer's got a 12 hour fast uh, and her metabolism is a little different than yours. Um, that there's two ways to, to, to kind of crack the code that you're struggling with. 
One is uh, we get you some better sleep habits and some sleep um, antidotes. I, I, it's my specialty. I love sleep. I teach people sleep. I repair from sleep. The reason I was studying a ketogenic diet is because of what it does to the brain and their sleep cycle. It's, it is incredible. But there's a barrier. When they have chronic pain and when they've been using alcohol to sleep, you are in the majority. That is such a common problem. And they say, but doc, I fasted except for that alcohol. I fasted except for that alcohol. And, and so then we say, all right, so let me, let's make a couple deals here. I'll help you work on your sleep, but um, I want you to tell me which way you think would be more acceptable in your life. And that is a 10 hour strict fast, which means that doesn't mean you can take the shot of alcohol right at the top of the hour. It means that you probably are done eating, drinking maybe 30 minutes. So it's got to get out of your stomach. So at least 30 minutes before that timer runs out, uh, and some doctors would actually say 60 minutes before the timer runs out, meaning if you're done eating at 7.30, uh, we'd want you to have no nothing going by the lips by till at 7 because you, you got to get it out of the GI, the, the stomach, and into the, into the intestines. So if we said, all right, 10 and a half hours essentially is what that would mean then of strict fast, only water, only salt, but you did it every night. Would you be able to keep compliance with that better than two nights a week that you did a 36 hour fast? Yes. Okay. So which one you would do the 10 hour or the 36 hour, yeah. which one? Yeah. the 10 hour. Yeah. Okay. And I'll tell you, that's the easy, that's the one where as I studied patients, it's easier to set up them in a pattern that this is what you're going to do. Um, as we also continue to work on some sleep stuff and we can, do that off the air, but the the key is that if you are in the masses when it comes to sleep problems, pain problems, and saying, you know, doc, I really have cut the carbs, and look at I've lost this weight because you've lost quite a bit of weight, right, yeah. John? I have, right, yeah. and, and that's a huge step in the right direction. I mean, that alone will, I would, I'll take that in my clinic any day. But the danger is is that you're going to plateau and not going to get some of these other additional benefits that I, I really can't wait to see how you're feeling at about end of January um, because there's some some of the hormone stuff we've talked about in the past just takes that strong ketogenic produ production. So those 1.5s like you're doing, those are really good because I know what's happening in about two months now if we can keep numbers looking like that. Um, one other thing, John, how often do you test your glucose? The glucose ketones. I've been tested regularly, regularly. Um, okay. but but this week, this week, because the New York, New York and all that, all that there was a, was a or uh, three days where Jen was in Ohio and she she had the the meter with her, so I haven't been checking it as often. Uh, okay. But since hopefully after this New York trip, things will kind of go back to normal. Um, uh, and that's kind of where I was going with this is that again, kind of like fasting, the newness factor of checking sugars becomes like it's fun and exciting. And then it kind of becomes this like, oh yeah, well, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so when you get back home, I would like a week of what with a 10 hour strict fast, what are the numbers? Okay. Uh, and I tell you that to say, it's, it's not something you're going to have to do for a lifetime, but I have to have enough information to say, what's your metabolism redoing with this strict 10 hour fast? Uh, and that will give me some of the data I need to say, all right, here's what's probably going to happen. Having all of the hiccups and uh, journey, have what's your weight done this past week, John? It's plateaued. It's, it stayed the okay. same. Okay. And that's expectable. That's expected. Hmm. So I think um, there was a couple of questions that you had uh, told me had come in over the last week. Do we have time for those? Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. Um, so the first question was, what is, what is, in your opinion, what is the easiest way for somebody to start keto? So this is always interesting because I, the start keto is always, where are you starting from? Okay, so if I have, um, if I have the patient who is, let's just take an extreme case, and this is actually real from my keto group here. Um, in, in injecting insulin, so she's insulin dependent diabetic, probably 200 pounds overweight, 150 to 200 pounds overweight. Um, she, she's brand new to group, so I don't know exactly what her weight is, but just kind of looking at her story. She comes in and she's read the book and she wants to do this. Um, she has probably seven uh, diet drinks a day. 
So she like soda pop drinks a day. Uh, and she is, um, she's, she loves carbs. She has those extra pounds on because she's been using carbs forever and ever and ever. So, you know, in my book, I talk about how I want them 20 carbs or less Count to 20. That's what you're doing. 20 carbs or less. Uh, but I'll be honest and somebody like that, if I put that on her plate and ask her to do that, um, much like what happened with John, they make a change and that sounds new and exciting. Uh, but she has a lot of other issues going on. Uh, so you, you, you'll see them do that change for like a week or two, and then they fall off. So when I get to see John every week, then I can say, oh, I'll let him do it. We'll see how it goes. And then when he gets kind of in this mess, then I'll say, here's what I would do. Let's do 10 hours. And let's just take a littler step in the right direction. So if I got to tell this lady what would I do with, if I was like her fairy godmother and said, here is exactly what I would do with your case. The first thing I would have her give up is um, the all the white stuff. So almost like going paleo, like the car, the bread, the potatoes, the um, the uh, you know all the white stuff. I can you know, starch foods that are bread, rice, pasta, potatoes. Those, that's what I'm. That's the mantra I was trying to get out. Uh, and in her case, uh, she wanted to do everything. She wanted to do the twenty, and I'm like, I wouldn't do that. When you first start keto, you have to look at how many habits are we trying to, to tackle. You know, in somebody like John, who'd kind of been teased into following what you had been cooking and 20 carbs or less was going to be easy. I mean, relatively easy. It wasn't all those changes. But you take her story. I start out with the first week is um, no white stuff. And then I want to see at the end of the week, did you make it? Did you get to that threshold? And if you say, oh, yeah, doc, I don't do, maybe I have a couple of pieces of bread a week, but I really don't have hardly any bread. So if you're coming into the, the ketogenic diet and you've kind of given up the white stuff already, the next thing I would ask her to do is take out all sweets, sweet tastes from her drinks. And again, I'm looking for what habit do I know is going to be difficult to tackle? And I'm going to want to help her with that as soon as possible to get that one taken care of as we move towards the other habits. So those sweet drinks, boy, if they can tackle those sweet drinks, um, it, it's an addiction. Uh, in some cases, they fall off the bandwagon and say, I can't do it, can't do it. In that case, I send them ketones in a can and say, all right, if you're trying to, if you love sweet drinks and you are a soda pop or whatever their, whatever their sweet drink is, I want to put the kind of fuel in your body that actually turns on those mitochondria to burn ketones. And ketones in a can does that. So now let if, me let me just yeah. clarify real quick. When she says ketones in a can, that means exogenous ketones. And also let me just tell you that um, Dr. Bosworth has um, made her own. She has uh, Dr. Ba's exogenous ketones and you will find them linked in the show notes. So when this is over, you can go back and look at the notes. Her book is there, her ketones are there. Um, there's a few other things. Let me mention those real quick too. Um, if you need help with meal plans, you can sign up for free meal plans at uh, mealplanbuddy.com. And we will send you, I personally send those out. Um, yeah. Uh, also, let me, let me, somebody else is asking while you're on this conversation, let me go back real quick. Um, somebody asked what the name of the book is. It's Any Way You Can by Dr. Bosworth. She's going to show you um, what it looks like real quick. It's on Amazon. It's also linked in the show notes. Um, somebody is asking... Does sugar-free iced tea break your fast? <laughs> sugar-free iced tea. So when I, when I hear sugar-free iced tea, I'm thinking it's water with a tea bag in cold, in cold liquid, not water with a tea bag with stevia or something. So the first question I want to know is, does it taste sweet? So I've been tricked by a lot of patients who are saying, but doc, it's calorie-free. <laughs> Yeah, that was going to work when you were 16, but you've had that 50 pounds on for the better part of two decades, and it changes the way your body metabolizes things now. So I try to carefully say, I want nothing that tastes sweet. And so that's a tough thing. I'll be honest, I didn't give up the sweet taste for probably till I'd been in keto for a couple of years, because it was, again, this very strong addiction. And I had plateaued as well, I, but I didn't care. I felt good. 
and then if I wanted to go to the next level, you do have to tackle that putting liquids in without the sweet taste is something eventually they do have to tackle. Yeah. But if they can't give it up, the ketones in a can, which is also called exogenous ketones, what that does is powerful. I mean, this is what the Navy SEALs are, were tested on for mental performance, and they had the improved mental performance when they put exogenous ketones into these athletes and tested their performance. So there are still lots of benefits that you get from these exogenous ketones. When I first started doing the ketogenic diet, I didn't let my mom have them. I didn't use them at all. I didn't find a place for them. But I'll be honest, I had to kind of eat my words there and say there are places that these really do have a benefit, especially when you've got this, you know, they're saying, I want to I want to step over the threshold and do this ketogenic diet, but I can't give up some of these things. Yeah. That transition from heavy carbs to low carbs, who, it's really tough. And when they first start that ketogenic diet, I wish I would have known this trick a long time ago. I lost several patients to saying, ah, too hard, too hard, can't do it, because I didn't use that trick. So let me recap, see if you did that. I would give up the white stuff for a week. If you've already done the white stuff, then I would say try, try to reach for the no sweetness in your drinks. So that's iced tea, that's black coffee, that's, um, that's uh, um, water. Uh, if you can't do that, then I would use ketones in a can. So have the sweetness, sweet flavors, but have ketones in a can. Uh, and those are the ways that I would start this diet. To make sure I answer the question that if her, if she means like a sweetened tea, a tea that has a sugar substitute, and that's what she's asking, does it break your fast? I would say yes, that breaks your fast. Uh, those sugar substitutes really do have a metabolic process that is it stimulates most of my patients to have a response. Okay. Now, you can outsmart me by checking. I mean, that's the key to having uh, your own blood sugars, blood glucose, is take that sweet tea in, 30 minutes later, look at your glucose and your ketones. So you wanna take it before you put the stuff in, and so you got the, that one set of numbers, drink it down, check it at the 30 minute mark, and check it at the 60 minute mark. And if you see your sugar go up and your ketones go down, guess what, you broke your fast. So, so somebody is asking about lemon juice and water. Yeah, you know, I've had that several times. The good thing about lemon juice is the acidity, um, kind of like fermented, uh, bless you, uh, <laughs> kind of like fermented uh, foods or like kombucha. If you can get that acidity level down to like a 3.1 pH, and I know that's a little technical, but um, the lemon juice didn't seem to do anything. I tested this in several of my patients too. I've tested it in me, I've tested it in my mom, where I get to poke them a lot and they don't crab at me. But a little bit of lemon juice didn't seem to do anything. It didn't break their fast. So to me, that was that was safe enough. But the lemon juice plus the sugar substitute, which then they, that's where things got tricky. Like, I wouldn't do that. But so going to checking your glucose uh, and checking your with your monitor if you have one. So mm -hmm. you do it in the morning when you wake up. Is there mm -hmm. also do it throughout the day, like you're talking about? If if yeah, so this this is a cost thing. So if I'm looking at for the biggest bang for the buck, I want to do it first thing when you get up. Like I tell my ladies, when you're sitting on the toilet, have the glucometer sitting right there because the first thing you do is you go to the bathroom, and I just don't. I don't want you moving around a lot. I don't want you going to make a cup of coffee and letting the dog out. I want you to check it before you do all that stuff. So the, that, that's the best information for me is the earliest first thing in the morning. But if you go to my Instagram, I check it before I work out. I check it after I work out. I check it if I feel ticked off or upset or irritable. <laughs> it must be the numbers. It's got to be something else. Uh, but it's another way for me to just to tune in what's going on. Um, you know, I really... I'm really curious about it. Someday I'm going to find a way to get one of those continuous glucose monitors where you plug it into your arm. And okay, my husband's like, I'm not living with you that month. <laughs> but I, I think it'd be very curious to see how the sugars relate to when you're, you know, you go for a walk. Uh, um, and, and that teachable process is what I like patients to, to biohack themselves. Like yeah. you say, well, what does the alcohol do to you? Well, do an experiment. Uh, check it before you put the alcohol in. And then check it 30 minutes after you start drinking. And, you know, like let's say you're sipping on a glass of wine or scotch, and that 30 minutes, that was the first calorie, so that's where you want to ch test it. Check it at an hour, then check it at two hours. And just even studying that pattern and what it does to you, there's, there's, there's this 
connection that happens when you have your own numbers, numbers and what they translate into as far as you tell them. Okay. So mm -hmm. the next question that is, I think the number two question that's always asked for somebody starting out is what supplements do you recommend? Right. You know, I, I'm a big uh, minimalist. Yeah. Um, um, the ketones in a can was a big, was a big special for me to step up. I, the evidence is very compelling. Like, compelling. Like, it is real. That real. is there. That is there. The, so the, I would, so I would, I would, would ketones, otherwise ketones called beta hydroxybutyrate, EHB is what its initials are. are. I, I actually do think I actually do think it's a the second thing that I'll, thing that I'll, I'll focus, focus, focus on is magnesium. Magnesium. So, is yeah. that glycinate? Well, so, well, so <laughs> magnesium comes in a of, 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 you know, you know attached to another uh, salt or a, a, a sugar, actually. sugar, actually. So be careful so not to do that one. That one. Yeah. And if you put too much magnesium, put magnesium in the body at once, it causes um, diarrhea. <laughs> like milk of magnesium, <laughs> they've completely <laughs> taken the side effect of magnesium. <laughs> we both nodded at the same time. <laughs> uh, and there's a couple of poor, I call them poor man drinks for magnesium, for magnesium, for a little splash of milk of magnesium, water, water, all day long, all day long. Because a little bit of magnesium doesn't cause them. Diarrhea. It's the, right. it's the volume, volume of magnesium, of magnesium, 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 magnesium diarrhea. Diarrhea. So yeah. it's an easy way to do that is to yeah. just sprinkle some in. My it, favorite way to get magnesium is, is Epsom salt float. Salt float. Uh, where they where go in go in spas and for an hour they just hour, they just, just relax first relax, of all. First of all. The, water the water is so concentrated so with magnesium, uh, magnesium that. Kind of like, like the, the salts, salts sink, 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 and, sink, and, sink, sink, and it, it, the water kind of feels funny. feels funny. Anyway, I have found, um, and there's actually studies on this, saying that the blood levels of magnesium to be absorbed through the skin is much uh, better if you can have a higher increase in the magnesium you don't make the diarrhea. You really do absorb that one. Hey, Dr. Boss, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. um, we're getting an echo on you and you're you're cutting out every other word. Do you want to reset real quick and try and jump yeah. back in yeah. and I'll talk a little bit about the ratios? Okay, she's going to come back a little bit. Um, the reason she's trying to get, I saw a question here. It says, what number should I look for in the glucose ratio? And she says that what you need to do is you need to take your glucose, divide it by your ketone number, and the ratio for weight loss should be under 80%. How, how am I now? How am I now? You're great. I think I'm lagging, though. I think I should reset. I'm going to reset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to talk a little bit about those ratio numbers because everybody's asking what number do you recommend? You do right. that and so each week when I fast, I fast, you'll see my numbers in the Instagram numbers to look for a ratio of 40. So I'm looking for a blood glucose divided by the ketones of 40 or less. And the reason I do that is I am trying to have a bit of autophagy. Uh, autophagy is that process where you recycle those uh, subcellular proteins and particles uh, and you use them as energy. Uh, it sounds like a nice little cleanup job, but there are improvements in memory, improvements in brain function, improvements in immune system, cancer prevention, lots of data that has been linked to how can, if we can ignite autophagy, we get that. If In the book, you'll hear me talk about my mom who'd had cancer for 10 years, and she was not a spring chicken anymore. She was 71 when the story started with lots of problems. The immune system wasn't working. She'd been on antibiotics for 50 out of the 52 previous weeks. And she had, for every 5,000 white blood cells that were dysfunctional, she had one that was functioning. So she had a mess. Uh, we needed autophagy now. And if I would have known as much as I know now, back then, I would have had her checking these numbers right away, that we wanted her ratio of the blood glucose divided by the ketones to be 20 or less so for 
for your mom, you had her at 20 or less to help fight the cancer. And mm -hmm. there's a question here. Marianne asked, does the ratio have to be there all day long? So for your mom, you were looking to make that 20 number all day long, right? Right. That's right. So, it was really difficult. That's where okay. that was so, super hard. So for someone, yeah, I can't even imagine 20, but, um, for somebody who's trying to be under the weight loss zone of 80, you still want that number to be all day long too, right? Yeah, that would be the perfect, that would be perfect, right? Yeah. So let's take somebody like you, you've got pretty good numbers and we're looking at the, what I think is the best metabolic, the most metabolically flexible, which is that first number in the morning. Yeah. And you've got some great numbers, like they're under 40. Yeah. So I know that you, with a pretty good solid confidence that we are metabolically stimulating your metabolism. We're increasing your metabolism by grabbing that, uh, that ratio of 40 or less. Uh, if if I had a continuous monitor, I would say, you know, Jennifer, if you could keep that under 40 uh, for the whole day and all night, we'd have your extra 50 pounds gone in another month and a half. Oh. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's not possible. I mean, as soon as you have a little bit too much to eat, your insulin responds. And again, it's not, that's hard. That's really hard. If you, if you had a life or death situation, then I would tell you, you know, monitor it all day. We're trying to keep you under uh, 40 for, for the next, you know, till we get the 50 pounds off. So that's why you see in my, in my weekly fasting, I reach for a, a ratio of 40. And if I really wanted to get the other 15 pounds off that I should get off, I would keep it under 40 all the time. That's too hard for me. <laughs> yeah, I have a life to live and there's other things that come my way. Like, oh, so I can't do that. Let me give you a situation because I had a friend of mine tell me that she had this exact example during the day. And she, um, just to give you a little bit of background on her, she's been keto for a long time. And during this, these numbers, she's been fasted for 16 hours also. But her numbers came up to be 85 as a glucose and only 0.5 of the ketones, which made her ratio 170. Yep, I've had some of those. If you look at my Instagram feed, you'll see some of them are like that. So again, the power, the power of the ratio is in the denominator. It's in the one that you're dividing by. So that ketone production is really powerful. And for so I'm it sounds like she's a woman. Uh, yeah. it, you know, what decade of life? 30s, 40s, 50s? She's about my age, I would say. So if you look at that metabolism, and has she had a chapter of life where she's had a good 30 pounds on for the better part of five years? Yes. Okay. So that gives me a sense of metabolically resistant. Uh, it it is a case like that where the way you biohack it is you got to check it. Um, but the second thing is, is she shouldn't probably just be checking in the morning. I want to see what it does the rest of the day. So, uh, like, what is it when she starts her fast at the end of the day? How high did her sugars get then? Uh, you know, if she's if she is a similar time zone to you where she stops eating around that 530-ish well, time? Well, she started. So, I've told her. She's actually watched all of our replays. Oh, and good. she has started changing her window of eating to earlier in the day to help support those hormones and cortisols and everything. Mm -hmm. And she has noticed a weight loss. In fact, it has sparked it. And she's been stalled, I think, for a year. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's huge for her because she was at a point where she just she was not going to give up keto, but she just didn't think there was anything that could help her. And, and that little switch from stopping the eating and starting your fasting earlier in the day really is helping. And that is a big deal. Um, let me, let me answer one. Let me ask this one question here because uh, it's, I think it's important and I want to know the answer too. Um, Cause I was insulin resistant or am insulin resistant, but this person is asking, I am fasting regularly. I'm in ketosis for months and wondering when IR, meaning insulin resistance, will no longer be a problem. Yes, when will that no longer be a problem for us? <laughs> well, so again, that remember how your body reset after you lost all that weight at first? And then it took you about a year, but you're kind of stable at this other new level. So when you've lost and lost the body weight and gotten your body back down to its ideal body weight, and I know people have a lot of negative things to say about body mass index, but those body mass indexes really do have to do with how high, how, what is your height, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and what is about the range you should be at for your for your body weight. Mm -hmm. So when you say what, when will the insulin respond normally? And yeah, again, we really want to ignite your autophagy. So that's why we're having you check these ratios. We want to ignite that in hopes to recycle and repair and kind of get a whole new set of cells that aren't aren't used to being bathed in insulin. Um, but that reset is at least six months into your ideal body weight. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's a long time. I mean, I mean I, you look at even my story where, um, you know, it doesn't help when you know the science. It doesn't make it any easier for you to change these behaviors. So, you know, I have kind of been stuck at the 140 level for a long time. And even with these intermittent fastings, I find a way to eat enough calories when I'm not doing my fast or I cheat or I have a glass of wine or, you know, something that just pushes me out of ketosis that um, I, that insulin resistance will come back like that. <laughs> There's nothing better than that jar of gummy worms from vitamin C to shove my blood sugar up to 200 and then not have the ability to get it back down for almost a day and a half. And that is just a clear sign that my body overshot the insulin. Uh, and then I kind of hung out in that insulin pattern again, kind of almost the haunting of where my metabolism had been. So you say, will that ever go away? Well, you got to keep pushing it down with these chunks of improvements. Uh, so when your friend says, will it ever go away? Or the, whoever, whoever the gal is, will it ever go away? Uh, try not to look that far ahead. What you really want to look at is, are you feeling better? And what's the next tiny little thing that you can do to improve you? Yeah. So in, in some a case like yours and a case like John's, I'm trying to say, I need you to carve out these hours of no eating and you don't get to change the morning time. You only get to change the rear time. And if you mess it up and you have a glass of wine or things don't go right, well, the next day, try to start it a little earlier to kind of make up for that. Those are going to be the ways where you can say uh, it, it's not perfect, but it especially as we study your numbers going forward, we'll be able to see where you, where you land. And, you know, just hearing you say that, um, I know I've been very vulnerable in telling you that I've had a serious sugar, sugar the better part of, part of my whole life. Right. And um, just hearing you say gummy bears or eggnog or anything like that, I am, I am terrified to have sugar. Like I am so afraid that I'm going to, I feel like, if I feel like sugar's my drug, yeah. and if I have a drug, you know, I, I feel like I'm gonna, I, I would slip back into it, and it's powerful. <laughs> I know that sounds so stupid, but no. that's what keeps me, I wanna say clean, because. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. We call it clean eating, right? <laughs> yes. It is so real. The number of patients that I have yeah. uh, seen. Uh, teeter on how do you change a behavior and how do you change it in a way that it sticks? It has so much psychology about you know looking at what it, what pleasure do you get from that sugar, uh, and then what comfort do you feel from that sugar, and then kind of unpacking and saying what other things can you do in your life to 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 uh, obtain that dopamine, if you would. Yeah, uh, I mean you really do make dopamine when you put in that sugar and it becomes this drug where you put in the sugar and you hardly get the bump in dopamine because you do it so often. Yeah. Um, I would contend that when you've been as long as you've gone without it, <laughs> that if you do reward yourself with a, a real live sugary cupcake, mm -hmm. you're going to have like a party in your brain. <laughs> it's going to be as, whoa. No, I don't. I I just can't even imagine going there. Like Lily's chocolate chips are good, and they, and they don't affect me. So I'm I'm uh, I'm good. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's great. I, you know, whatever the journey is, but I think it's it's also there's so many patients out there that have had the same struggle where they say, um, you know, do you have to give it up completely? And, and you know, I, we work on that one day at a time, one chapter at a time. What I really like to watch patients do is to unpack why was it so joyful? Why was there so much joy packed in eating? And again, this isn't something that you have an answer for right away. It's a reflection kind of answer where you say, I'm in this moment, I feel really ticked off, I feel really stressed, why do I wanna have, and then fill in the blank. You know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, sugar, all those things become our like, help me feel better, help me feel better. For sure. If you can push back against it just enough and say, why? 
why do you want that? And, and what else could I do to feel good? And, you know, when I'm fasting, the things I've learned are, um, I know I've been married a long time, so this doesn't happen nearly as often as I like, but a foot rub is amazing. How like I can get joy out of that. I didn't used to, you know, I can go for a float and really feel just like this really nice treat, yeah. almost the kind of joy I used to get from having a lot of sugar when I get stressed out. Mm -hmm. And I think as you walk, walk other people through the addiction repair of when it is, you know, cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, those types of, they reach for that when they don't have the skills to really get through the stress in another way, they're not going to wake up suddenly with the skill to do that. You're going to have to learn that this feels good and I can choose this in the moment of stress. So, sure. yeah. You want to hear another interesting thing this week? Yes. Is that I've heard that skin tags happen because of insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. I had one fall off. Yay! That is such <laughs> so a So I had to research skin tag fall off, and I read all this stuff about insulin resistance, and I'm like, oh, it's working. Yes, that is autophagy in its biggest form to say if you are removing that skin tag, that is, I mean, it's a really big sign for me. I, I've learned to look at the backs of knees, the backs of heads, the inside of elbows, and when that skin starts to turn dark, uh, it's a fancy word in medicine that just says, uh oh, that's insulin resistant. But when yeah. they start coming with skin tags saying, I want you to cut these off, I'm like, I can cut these off, but you should be checking your insulin and your sugar and your ketones. There's a way bigger problem than these skin tags. Yeah. And when they do get that metabolism to ignite, they do fall off. <laughs> that's yes, so good. Do. It's so weird. Good. But it's good. Hey, we have time for just one more question. And I don't know if this is an easy one or if we maybe should save it for next week. But um, breastfeeding mamas, what glucose ketone ratios should breastfeeding mamas worry about? Well, so breastfeeding is a very interesting metabolic challenge. Uh, I just think it's helpful for the audience to know that breast milk is ketogenic. It is uh, high fat, uh, low carb. Those babies grow and are... are um, are, ex are supposed to be, I mean, that ketosis state is very well supported that their brain development needs that. So what, what I look at for um, my uh, nursing moms is that they are not losing a lot of weight. Uh, I mean, I know that after that pregnancy, you wanna lose a lot of weight, but your, your responsibility towards uh, providing nice fatty breast milk, uh, so what you can get with a ketogenic diet. Uh, the ratios for that, I would keep you around I mean, I actually wouldn't do anything more than pee ketones. I mean, I wouldn't probably check blood sugars, the blood glucoses, uh, pee ketones and get those morning uh, sugars. If you can get them under uh, 100, then that's all I would do while you're breastfeeding. Great. So again, all I'm looking for is the urine ketones in them. Uh, I'm not looking at ratios. I'm not getting that strict. When I take somebody through weight loss or through this um, autoimmune process or through the cancer, those are those three numbers that I... You know, less than 80, less than 40, less than 20 with those ratios, that's medically prescribed. That's me watching what their metabolism needs over time. When you've got breast can't, breastfeeding that you're responsible for, I want your body making ketones. That's a great idea for nourishing you, nourishing your brain, really getting your brain hormones back to normal after being pregnant. But And then just keep the sugars out of the diabetes range. So get those morning blood sugars under 100 and I wouldn't, I wouldn't do any more looking than that. Perfect. Well, good. I think that just about wraps up because we're just about at the top of the hour. I do want to remind people if you, um, if you are watching, you're watching the replay, just hashtag replay. So we know we, we do go back and read these comments. If you have questions for future shows, leave us, um, leave us a comment. Let us know how we can help you. We do these live videos so, th so that we can teach everybody all of our knowledge and experience on the ketogenic diet. Um, also, if you have not read uh, Dr. Bosworth's book, Any Way You Can, I highly ex uh, suggest that you get it. John and I have both read it. Um, I've bought like three extra copies just to give to very close friends of mine who are struggling because it is a wealth of knowledge. And I still reference back to some things and I have it on audio so I can go back and hear things just so I can digest the information a little better, especially when I hit that situation that you're talking about in the book. 
Um, that's pretty important. Um, the other thing is, uh, Dr. Bosworth, how do they find you on YouTube? Like, um, do they just search your name or do you have a... The good news is I've got a lot of popularity now. So Dr. Boz, you'll find me there. But um, just this week I launched, well, I had my messy website, which I've kind of improved. So Boz, B-O-Z-M-D.com is a place where you can find a lot of the resources that I use. I've written out certain chapters of the book, several blog posts. Again, just trying to find a place where the information is uh, easy to get to. But I'll tell you, this kind of forum where I get to specifically talk to two people going through the process, it's my favorite. I love doing this. I'm so glad you reached out to, to you know, kind of do this experiment. Uh, and I just find that the kind of feedback I hear from my audiences is we love watching the, you answer the questions of the patients that are there being vulnerable and saying, in the real world, what's this look like? So I just want to say thank you again for just stepping sure. up and saying, let's share our stories. Let's see if we can help people by, by doing that. Yes, and, and with the holidays coming up and the fear of sugar, especially on my part, and I can see all the comments of uh, baking and holiday, I do just want to let people know um, I tend to be really good at keto recipes, so um, you can follow uh, along on lowcarbinspirations.com. I send out weekly meal plans that include usually a special dessert treat that's keto friendly. You can sign up for those. They are absolutely free. Go to mealplanbuddy.com, put in your email, and I will send you what I make my own family every week for free. Um, and we look forward to doing this with you again every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. She's working on keto beer next. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's we'll that. Yeah, he really yeah. wants keto beer. You got a dream. It is the holiday. Oh boy. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you All next right. week. Good luck Thank with your you. calls this week. All right. Bye bye. Bye.